Hello. I'll be bringing your lesson today. This is not normal for me, and I won't be doing it regular. I'm usually behind the camera. But change of plans, and I'll be doing it today. Our lesson today is meditate on God's Word. Question one. What song or jingle do you, have you ever got one stuck in your head that you just keep singing it over and over and over? I've done that. It's easy to do. If it's a catchy tune or got a good beat to it, it it's easy to do. And I, I don't know why we do that, but it happens. Um, and the point being made on that is sometimes we just can't keep from just singing it over and over and over again. The point of our lesson this week is saturating our mind with scripture keeps us focused on the things of God. Uh, saturating our mind. Uh, just like that song saturates your mind. You keep see or, hearing it over and over. That's what we should do with the scripture. Um, it said that they did a research and, it, and were exposed to, to between four and 10,000 messages a day, be it on TV, radio, uh, your your cell phone um, and um, signs on the side of the road, it, it just everything. Uh, it that almost sounds unbelievable, but if you'll think about how long you spend in front of um, a, possibly a computer screen, that that's your job. You have to spend a lot of time in front of a computer screen computer screen um, and then not only that then you might be on your phone doing social media which I don't do it's 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 a waste of time um, and then uh, if you do have time in the evenings after supper and supper's cleaned up you might sit in front of the television and spend two to three hours watching television before you go to bed at night. So there's a lot of, of media all the way around us all the time. Um, I remember as a young girl, and I know this sounds odd to a lot of people, they've never experienced it. Um, when we had a, a, you don't even see them very often, uh, it was an old-fashioned telephone, and it hung on the wall, and it was wood. It had a speaker on it, and you, your little ear phone was on a cord, short, very short cord. You had to talk close, and um, I lived in the country, and the particular, I don't know how many families were on this, maybe 10, 12, 15, I really don't know, but our particular ring was three rings, and then I'm sure a certain amount of pause, and then three rings, and then you answered the phone, and uh, the operator just lived about a mile away from us, uh, so she would connect us. But that that's the first phone, <laughs> that there was the wall phone, and I've, I went through that. My husband, worked on the railroad for 40 years uh, and he was on call 24 24 7. Um, we did have an inside phone we had to have an inside phone but we also had to stay by that phone to answer it to get his call to go to work um, now you carry your phone with you. Therefore, you got media all the way around us. Um, and then we say, "Well, we don't. I don't. I don't have time." Um, it it's it don't 
take very much time to read God's Word. Uh, possibly get up 10 or 15 minutes earlier in the morning or possibly 15 minutes later at night when you've got the kids all in bed and all the chores are done. Uh, maybe the, then you ten, a very small amount of time, 10 or 15 minutes to read your Bible, uh, meditate. Uh, what, uh, let's see, what comes to mind when you hear the word meditate? Perhaps it's a monastery and you see a lot of monks sitting around and they're in prayer. Um, uh, biblical meditation differs from different religions. Um, okay, it says, Rather than emptying your mind of your negative thoughts, biblical meditation seeks to fill your mind with God's truths. Therefore, our mind would be filled with God's Word. We should meditate on it. Uh, ask for wisdom. Ask for guidance. <coughs> daily, as we should daily. If we're doing God's will, we should be asking for guidance every day. I can't say that I do this. Uh, I should. We always do in hard times. I think it's easy to fall back on, on God on hard times, but we ought to fall back on God on the good times too and give Him the blessings of uh, in the in the um, give him due the respect that he's due for what he's done for us. Um, consider what happens when you regularly meditate on God's word. The psalmist compares you to a whale watered tree that bears fruit in its season that bears fruit in its season season even a tree you can take a desert climate like this summer has been extremely dry extremely dry but if you water that tree and give it the care and attention it needs it will thrive even under those dark, the most dire circumstances. A maturing Christian follower should regularly read God's Word, hear God's Word, study God's Word, and meditate on God's Word and last, memorize God's Word. Let, let me go back. I've jumped ahead of myself and read the scripture today. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight in this is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its flute, fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. So Tom, Psalms tells us there, if we read and read the Lord's Word, study, meditate on it, I do believe he, he, he says we will be blessed. 
I'm convicted of things a lot of times when people say uh, maybe they had had good fortune. Um, uh, they won something or they found something they lost. Whatever the circumstance, they were happy when they found it. Uh, some people say, oh man, you was lucky. It was, if it was meant for them to find it, or for things to go well, I think I, I think they're blessed. I think that, that they're looked after. That they, they they really are blessed. They're not just lucky. They're blessed when things happen to the good, uh, and things don't always happen to the good. Things are always bad that are going to happen, and. Um, if we did these things, uh, read God's Word, we become more familiar with His Word. Nearly everybody has uh, a, fra a favorite scripture or scriptures that mean more to them uh, than others. Start with those. Um, be really become familiar with them. That that meditate on them. Uh, the Hebrew word for meditate means primarily to be occupied with. You could be occupied with those few scriptures that you, that you know. It might lead you to read other scriptures that are related to the one you like or mean something to you. Um, by learning more about God's Word, we keep it in mind and, and, and it, we might be able to bring it back to mind in different situations in our daily life. Question two. Let's see, what was the first question? Oh, about the song getting stuck in your mind. All right, question two. When does a Bible verse when has a Bible Bible verse stuck with you during a season of life. The scripture is Psalms 1, 4 through 6. The wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like chafe that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. The psalmist gave another contrast um, between the wicked and the righteous. God watches over those who walk according to his word and he judges those who do not. Stated another way, those who know and follow God's word experience blessing, while those who do not suffer ruins. <clears throat> Therefore, it behooves us to etch God's word on our hearts through study, meditation, memorization, so that we might live out his truth in our everyday lives. And through our lives, it might show others what God's done for you, what he means to you. Um, the author of this um, has a little paragraph here I want to read to you. It says, 
I was first introduced to Janet Pope when I was a college student in Mississippi, and her examples never left me. Janet knows the fruit of meditating on God's Word. She didn't grow up in a Christian home. She became a, came to Christ when she is in college. And it doesn't say through a friend or what. It doesn't say through a class or why. But as a stock college student, she began to read the Bible for herself. According to Janet, it was love at first read. From that point on, she endeavored to memorize large portions of the Bible. Over the course of 25 years, she has memorized 17 books of the Bible. 17 books. That's amazing. Her book, His Word in My Heart, memorizing, memorizing scripture for a closer walk with God, she wrote, people often ask me if I have a good method for memorizing scripture. I tell them no. I have, but I have great motivation. If you're highly motivated, any method will do. It's my hope that this study will increase your motivation for memorizing God's Word. Without Scripture, we would never know what it means to live right, righteously. As we hear, read, and study it, Scripture, scripture shows us what righteous living is. Then, by meditating on it and memorizing it, we carry it around with us in our hearts and in our minds that we might have it available to us at the right time. When you internalize God's Word in your heart and mind, His truth is ready for you to call on at any time, any place, to help you induce obedience, love, and worship. When people ask Janet Pope, what's the most difficult part about memorizing Scripture, she said, living it. living it. That's the hardest part for us as Christians. But the more we read it and meditate it, um, it should be, it should, it gets easier. We should want to learn more. Okay, question three. What are some specific ways your life has changed because of your connection with God's Word? Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, what is it, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. We should dwell on these things that are true, honorable. If basically, if you if you if you let your mind get down in the gutter, and it can, it could. Um, are you just having a bad day, and you're you're. Maybe you said a curse word you don't normally do, and you're, or, or, 
hollered at your wife or your kids or something, um, that's just a bad day. But if we meditate, we might and pray on these things, and Jesus or God will tell us what to do in these situations. If we'll ask him, pray about it, um, open our hearts up to his words. Question four, what are the benefits of keeping these godly virtues at the forefront of our thinking? Our mind's filter is only as effective as our scriptural database is full. To think rightly about all aspects of life. To love God more deeply, we must daily and consistently meditate on and memorize scripture. Hmm. The author says, I remember the first time God gripped my heart with Bible meditation and memory. I was a first year seminary student. For my spiritual formation class, my professor required us to memorize a chapter of scripture at least 20 verses long. Honestly, I was overwhelmed. But I did it. I memorized the second chapter of 1 Thessalonians because of my love for disciple making. It was the most informative yet the most convincing assignment I've ever completed. I initially memorized a chapter of God's Word for a grade, but learning the value of filling my mind and heart with God's Word since then has allowed me to memorize many more verses, paragraphs, and chapters of Scripture. But it all started with the first verse. For you yourself know, brothers and sisters, that our visit with you was not without results. 1 Thessalonians 2, 1. Um, question five, how does thinking on these things differ from just thinking happy thoughts? Hmm. Some question, another question, what are some things that distract you from staying focused on your walk with the Lord? Like I said earlier, Maybe, maybe you should get up earlier in the morning to have your quiet time and meditation and prayer time in the morning before the kids and the husband and the hustle and the bustle of the day is started. Or, on the other hand, do it at night time when everybody's gone to bed and it's quiet. And you can focus strictly on your Bible verses, your Bible reading, your meditation. How can spending time reading and meditating on God's Word help you combat worldly thoughts and things that distract you? There's verses of Scripture that deal with a just about any situation you can be in. Uh, good, bad, um, that I'm sure would help you. What are some scripture patches you have memorized? I'm sorry, I'm bad at this. I can, I can co quote some scriptures, but. <clears throat> They're not probably scripturally correct. <laughs> I might not get it all in there. 
or get it all in the right place. I'm going to have to work on that. So that's basically our lesson today. Um, it's really trying to build your reading life, reading more scripture. Um, the more you read, I think the more you read, the more you understand. Uh, the more your mind's open to understand it. We could all probably do better at it. I know for one, I'm, I'm going to try to do better at it. Thank you for having me today, and we'll close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here today. We pray for all of those that have viewed this today that they they might receive something out of it that might help them in their, in their daily visit with you, Lord, um, be it through scripture, be it through prayer, be it through reading the Bible, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, forgive me for not doing these things like I should, Lord. I ask that you'll help me in my daily life with you, reading the scripture, prayer, and meditation, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for getting this day, and all of those that out there, I believe that you bless them, and if they have problems, that you would be with them during their problems, and in their prayers, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, thank you for the rain that we have gotten. We pray, Lord, that it would be a blessing to you that we would give you the, the praise and glory for what we have, for the rain that we've received. At, and we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.